I want to go through an example of an important mathematical technique that physicists use all the time, for example, in calculating the work done by a force as a particle travels through, uh, travels along some given path. Uh, the mathematical technique is line integrals, and a line integral follows a curving path, a curving line, a curved line from one place to another, and it's adding up the contribution, in physics terms, in work, it's adding up the contributions of force dot product with distance along some curving path. So for this particular example, I've got a force that's equal to y x hat plus 2x y hat. It, those are the, the components of this force. And uh, those components are acting over this region. And I'm going to follow three different paths from the origin at x equals y equals 0 to this final point at x equals y equals 1. Uh, I should point out that I am leaving out units out of this whole story. I'm not trying to do anything with units. This is just a mathematical technique. If you're doing this for real in physics, you'd better have units along. But for this, for right now, the definition of a line integral is an integral along a path of force dot product dr. And so we've got to figure out what these different paths do, how they work. And path A is, in some sense, the simplest. First, we go straight along the x-axis. And then from there, we go straight up the y, uh, parallel to the y-axis. And that gets us to where we're going in two steps. Because it's a two-step path, I'm going to break this up into two pieces. I'll call this path A1 and this path A2, just so we can label them. Anytime you have a path that's broken into two pieces, we're going to break our integral into two pieces. So for path A, my integral of force, uh, this is path A, force dot product dr is going to be broken into an integral along path a1 of force dot product dr plus an integral along path a2 of force dot product dr. Uh, that's, again, I'm talking in physics terms. You could change this to anything mathematically. So we break it up into the two paths that are described differently. Now, when I do these, when I look at any, any along any path, I need to know what dr is in terms of some parameter, because this is a vector, uh, dr is a vector, I want to know what that is in terms of some parameter of the problem. So in general, in general, I know that uh, dr is going to follow my path. And down here, well, I, I guess in general, I could write down that dr is going to be dx x hat plus dy y hat plus, I'll even leave out the z, just because we're doing two dimensions here, dx x hat plus dy y hat. And uh, I guess I could write that down. Um, I, can, I can follow this. Uh, let me look at this first one first. First things first, we'll do an integral along path a1 of my force dot product with dx x hat plus dy y hat. And Along this path, this is the line where dx, where, where, where x is just increasing with x and y is constant. If y is constant along my path, then I can immediately just say that the dy is zero. And so the dot product of my force vector with x hat, dx x hat, the x hat, y hat dot x hat will be zero, x hat dot x hat is one. So this is just going to equal my integral along path a1 of fx times dx, because my, it would be fy times dy, but my dy is zero along this path. There's no y motion in this path. So, so what is that? I guess this, so notice that the x hats have gone away because it was a dot product of x hat dot x hat, so that went away. So I've just got this, and I can plug in these pieces. dx is my variable now. I can see it's my parameter, and that dx goes from x equals zero to x equals one. fx is y. And hey, looking at this, y in this thing, uh, along this whole path, this whole path has y equals 0 along all of path a1. And so y is just 0. So this term, this part gives me 0. All right. What about the second piece? Along path a2, I've got my force dot product of the same thing, force dot product with dx x hat plus dy y hat. Well, for this path, my x is a constant. x equals 1 along that entire path a2. 
So if x is a constant, dx is 0. There's no change in x. And so that means this term is gone. There's only a y hat. And when I do this, I have my integral along path a2 of x hat dot y hat is 0, y hat dot y hat is 1. So this is going to be 2x dy. Again, I'm just plugging this in directly. 2x is the y hat is the y is the y component here, the, and dy is there. This is doing the dot product explicitly and doing this. 2x dy, but x, remember, equals 1 along my whole path. So well, that's a constant. This is just an integral of 2 dy measured from y equals 0 to y equals 1. And that's just equal to 2. So putting it all together, this is equal to 0 plus 2, which is just 2. So that's my answer along that first path, path A. The two-step path adds up to a 2 in whatever mysterious non-units these are. All right, that's for path A. What about path B? For path B, uh, let me erase this really quick. For path B, I want to know, again, what is my dr vector for this path B? Uh, it's, I know it's dx x hat plus dy y hat, but I also know that y equals x squared along the way. And if y equals x squared, then I could write this. This is dx x hat plus mathematicians, physicists, uh, and physicists disagree on how careful to be with some of our notation. A physicist would look at this. If y equals x squared, we would say that then dy dx equals 2x. And so we would say then that dy can be written as 2x dx. y hat. So that's my, this is my dr vector for path b. Uh, and why did I do it this way? Why did I replace y with x? I wanted to get this all with a single variable of integration. I guess I could have done two separate integrals. That would have worked too. Interesting. But, um, but I, it's helpful. It's, it's kind of nice to get it all with a single variable of integration. And so when I look at this then, my integral of f dot dr along path b, I can write as an integral along path b of, again, my force is y x hat plus 2x y hat dot product with this whole thing, dx x hat plus 2x dx y hat. And a dot product, x hat dot x hat is 1. So let me put this down, integral over path b of x hat dot x hat is 1. So I've got a y dx, x hat dot y hat is 0 y hat dot x hat is 0, and y hat dot y hat is 1. So I've got a 4x squared dx. Um, and that's all great. Remember, y equals, these are both dx. So I want to put this now all in terms of x. So y equals x squared. This term, this y here, is just an x squared term. And uh, hey, that looks like it's 5x squared. This can combine, can't it? That means this is an integral, and since I know it's dx now, my x goes from 0 to 1, of looks like 5x squared dx. And that integral is easy to do. The integral of x squared is 1 half, is, is one third x cubed. So this is going to equal 5 thirds x cubed integrated from 0 to 1. And plugging that in, 1 cubed minus 0 cubed, I get just 5 thirds. So 5 thirds is my integral along the second path, path B. Notice these are different. For this force that I've listed, the path matters. Following this path gives me an integral of 2. Following this path gives me an integral of 5 thirds. So, um, oh goodness, and now I'm disturbed because, uh, what just happened here? I'm disturbed because it turns out I'm comparing notes. Oh wait, I did a different path. Yes, good. So that, that's how this one will work. And remember, the crucial steps here were, first of all, writing my dr vector in terms of dx's and dy's and figuring that out. And second, doing the dot product, just multiplying out that dot product of force dot dr so I get an integral that I can do. 
And finally, plugging in what I knew. Just like here, I plugged in x equals 1, or plugged in y equals 0. Here, I plugged in y equals x squared, so I had this in terms of my variable of integration. That was the crucial piece. For my final example, my final path, I've got this circular arc along here. And because it's a circular arc, I need to find some way of describing that circular arc. How can I do that? Well, I suppose I could describe it in terms of an angle theta. Uh, if, I wanted to, if I wanted to talk about this, um, uh, if I wanted to talk about what the, what the path of this is going to be, I could say, well, uh, there are lots of ways of doing it. Um, there, there, there are many, many ways that we could do this. And um, I'm suddenly indecisive about how I want to how I want to go through this. Um, we could do just y equals the square root of one minus x squared or something. That would be a way of doing this. But I want to illustrate how I can solve this by doing a parameterized path instead. So let me just write this as along this arc, my position along the arc as a function of an angle theta could be written as uh, x of one, well, I'll even put it in terms of, yeah, uh, x of one minus the cosine of theta, I'll say that x hat, plus sine of theta, y hat. So you see that's going, when theta equals zero, cosine of theta is one, and that's zero. When theta equals pi, uh, yeah, when theta equals pi over two, so this is going to be my theta equals pi over two point, when theta equals pi over 2, I've just gone up the circle to this point, and that's going to be cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this is 1, and sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is 1. So this works. This is, this is a parameterization of that circle uh, going from theta equals 0 down here to theta equals pi over 2 up there. So there are other ways of doing this, but I wanted to show you the parametric pathway of doing it. So if this is my path as a function of theta, then for path C, Again, my first step is going to be to write down what is dr vector. What is my dr vector? Well, I can just do dr d theta and then multiply both sides by d theta. The dr d theta of this, negative cosine, go, the derivative of that is positive sine. So dr is going to be sine of theta d theta x hat. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So this is going to be plus cosine of theta, d theta, y hat. Again, all I did was just do dr d theta and then multiply both sides by d theta to get, my, to get this expression for dr. So I've got a dr written up here. I can even factor out the d theta if I wanted to. And when I do my work integral, when I do my line integral, my integral along path c of force dot product with dr is going to equal, well, I guess y dot, so I've got, again, I, I can put it in, y, oh, integral along c of y x hat plus 2x y hat dot product with this thing, sine theta d theta x hat plus cosine theta d theta y hat. Uh, when I do that dot product, again, x hat dot x hat is 1. So I'm going to have an integral along path C of y times sine theta d theta, because x hat dot x hat is 1. 0, 0, y hat dot y hat is 1. So this will be plus, uh, looks like, 2x cosine theta d theta. And this is all d theta now. I guess uh, the next step is going to be to put in my y value. Y is sine of theta, so this is and this is all d theta. So I can go theta from zero to pi over two of again sine of theta times sine of theta is going to be sine squared of theta for this term plus two x times cosine theta. X times cosine theta is this is going to be two times one minus cosine theta. So cosine theta minus cosine squared of theta. And then all this, I factor out a d theta from the whole thing. So these both have a d theta in them, so I can factor it out. I've got that whole story, and it's kind of a mess. 
uh, it's it's kind of a mess doing this whole thing. Um, but if we put it together, how's my time? Uh, if I put this all together, my integral of sine squared along the way, uh, I guess, uh, you know, honestly, I kind of want to just plug this into something. Uh, I, I could do this integral for you. I could go through the whole thing, but uh, it's boring. I'm just going to tell you that when you put this all together, you'll get this equals 2 minus pi over 4 as your answer, which is about 1.21. Uh, so again, yet another answer that's different than the other two. These are just some of the examples how you do this. Again, the key ideas here were you had to write down your dr in terms of your parameter, figure out what that dr is in terms of the parameter. You had to plug in for y. You had to plug in for x to get these terms. And, uh, and then you just find the limits of your parameter when you do it. So this is how you do line integrals. This is how it shows up. And I hope that's useful as you, uh, as you do some problems like this when you use line integrals in physics.